The pinks of Argyle have stunned the diamond world. Nothing like them has been found anywhere else. The color itself is a mystery. No one knows what creates these exquisite hues. But one thing has become very clear. There's something new that diamond collectors simply have to have. In an undisclosed hotel in midtown Manhattan, jewelry designer and dealer Alan Friedman is preparing for battle. Alan has been invited for the first time to Argyle's annual tender to bid on the finest pink diamonds the mine has produced this year. These are diamonds that never reach the open market. Diamonds only a privileged few will ever see. <laughs> Welcome along. Good to see you again. Alan is a third generation jeweler. In Beverly Hills, he creates original pieces for exclusive retail stores. And we have got some fantastic stones here to show you. As you know, you know a lot about pink diamonds, but you might like to just have a, a quick look to start with before we uh, settle down to a very serious look at the stones. Phenomenal collection. Is it, uh, between half a 51 stones have been selected from the 30 million carats mined this year. One and two carat. Just while you're on that side, perhaps lot 44 is a very special stone, which is a one carat 73 wow. radiant. Which is a beautiful the stone. stones are not large, but don't be fooled. Deep purplish pink. VS2. Their colors are so unusual. These are some of the most valuable diamonds in the world. Another one that we've got here. Very rare. Every collection has its masterpiece. In this case, a once-in-a-lifetime gem. This is the one that's featured in the catalog, which is uh, a 73-point emerald, but it's a fancy red diamond. And as you know, Alan, uh, there's been less than, than a handful ever graded, which makes it extraordinarily rare and uh, a real collector's piece. Probably the most collectible stone in the last decade. It's certainly in that sort of uh, league. Straight red. Wow. Alan is here not just to look. He's here to buy. But the stones have no set price tag. Alan must decide what he is willing to bid. He can bid on an individual stone, a handful of them, or go for the entire collection. Which one is that? We're going to... Uh, His bid is kept strictly confidential. Include these in the bid. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. At the end of the tender, Argyle decides who gets the diamonds. And this is a, a collection that could take uh, 100 years to build. Um, they're just absolutely fantastic. Each piece is breathtakingly beautiful. Each one is unique. The question is, what is each one worth? This is nature's art. This is nature's most beautiful art. This is, this is the essence. I mean, this is diamonds at their their rarest form their their uh, most incredible beauty their these are the diamonds that people look at in awe Alan is used to handling fine diamonds but even he has fallen under the red diamond spell well it's exciting to be holding probably one of the rarest diamonds available in the entire world today. Wow. This is a true collectible diamond. It's uh, as rare a gemstone that there is on Earth. The only fancy red diamond to ever auction at Christie's fetched a million dollars a carat. Alan is feeling the pressure. And you want to own one of them? Well, I'd love to own this one. For two days, Alan studies the stones 
trying to reach a final decision. Well, that's pretty soon. Which one is that? That's my max. Yeah. I, I, otherwise, it doesn't make sense. We're talking a lot of money. So we'll see what happens. Back at Argyle, the search for more pinks goes on. The giant conveyors and crushers are on the job 24 hours a day. But amidst all the rock and the dust and the machines, there's not a diamond in sight. They are still buried treasure. Yeah, you wouldn't even think that there's diamonds in there. It just looks like it's road base or yeah, just a mob of rocks. You like diamonds? So, <laughs> oh, I, I like to look at them, I don't like to buy them. <laughs> they're, they're supposed to be a girl's best friend, aren't they? <laughs> I think I like beer cans more than diamonds. <laughs> Most of the diamonds here are industrial, and the mine has made an economic decision to crush rock to a certain size. Argyle may be the world's largest diamond mine, but it will never produce the world's largest diamond. The majority of, of what you see on the surface at Argyle is crushing and screening plant. We don't want to crush a diamond, so we're very careful with our initial crushing processes to keep the, the rocks bigger than 15 millimeters, not to crush smaller than that, because that's the biggest diamond that we can expect to extract. As the rock is reduced, the treasure begins to appear. We're getting towards the last, final stage of the process at Argyle. As you can see, this is our stockpile. We've now crushed it down to a certain size, which is ready to be separated. It'll then be x-rayed, and that's where they'll get the diamonds out of. Well, they say it's about, for every thousand rocks, there's one diamond. So, as you can see, there's a hell of a lot of rocks here. <laughs> But there's thousands of diamonds still here as well. As diamonds begin to emerge, security gets tighter. Fewer and fewer workers are allowed into ever more restricted areas. As we go around most of the plant, you'll never see a diamond. It's still a very secretive item. 80% of the people who work here would say that they've never actually seen a diamond. So that's just a reality of the security that we have here at Argyle. If you don't need to get your hands on diamonds, you can't get your hands on diamonds. Security is so paramount that Argyle's patented X-ray process, which locates the diamonds hidden in the rocks, is strictly off limits to cameras. When you're working in, in a heavy, heavy medium separation area, that's when you do start seeing the final result. You can actually see why we are here. Honestly, you don't really pay much attention to it, but every now and then you think, Jesus, there's a, lot, there's a lot of sparklies hanging around. As you can see there, there's a couple of little bits of diamond there in the ore. The diamonds now leave the mine behind and head 1,300 miles south to Perth, the diamond capital of Australia. Every week, hundreds of plastic tubs carry thousands of carats worth millions of dollars. One by one, the stones are graded for size, color, and quality. As at the mine, much of the work is automated. But machines can only take the process so far. Ultimately, it's what the human eye sees in a diamond that counts. Gavin Begbie has been handling diamonds for 25 years. It takes an expert to evaluate the raw material. He's the front line for IDing a special find when it's still uncut and unpolished. I don't think 
you're ever prepared for some of those special stones that come along. It's the big stones that really surprise you. It, it just takes your breath away. Gavin is grading the pinks. Only a handful will be fine enough to reserve for the tender. Tender goods are extremely rare. Um, if you think of a year's production of, say, 40 million carats, um, to take your 40 or 50 most um, intense colors, largest stones of best quality, um, you're looking for a, a, an absolute needle in a haystack. This stone here is one of the largest stones we found um, just recently. It's seven, seven carats 35. Quality is very nice and the color is that beautiful bubblegum bubble gum pink. Um, and I'm sure it's a good contender for the, um, for the tender this year. Far from the rock from which they emerged, the diamonds finally reveal themselves. And when they do, it's all but impossible to resist them. There's a romance about the diamond that you just, you can't deny, it's there. There's something special about the nature of diamonds that you just can't walk away from. No other stone has it. The, the other stones, they're translucent, you can see through them. And the diamond, you can't. There's something in there that reflects back at you. It's maybe something that you, you see within yourself, I don't know, but, but it's just something that, that you don't get from another stone. Perhaps that's why they can also break your heart. Alan Friedman waited six weeks for the results of the Argyle tender, but Alan didn't win a single stone. Thirteen other bidders were successful in claiming the pinks. Their bids were never revealed. And as for the stunning red diamond? It's now part of a fabulous brooch that was sold in Hong Kong to a dealer from the Middle East. For extravagant diamonds, it's an inevitable fate. It seems they were made to adorn the privileged. But that's not all that diamonds can do. For diamonds have untapped capabilities, and after three billion years, we're finally discovering what they are.